This podcast has bad words. <laughs> How do you maintain minimalism in your kitchen, specifically the kitchen cupboards, fridge, freezer? I'm going to start in none of those places. <laughs> I want to start with flat surfaces. Ooh. So it's important to me that we have as few things as possible on our flat surfaces. Mm. Well, why is this? Because flat surfaces are the easiest place for us to just simply store things. <laughs> yeah. It's real easy. Oh, just throw my junk mail right there on the counter and then it piles up. Yeah. And having all of these accoutrements all over the counter, it piles up. Mm-hmm. And so I have a coffee maker there. I have a coffee grinder. I have the things that I use every day. We also bought an air fryer last year during the pandemic because mm-hmm. we started cooking even more at home than usual. And I wanted oh. alternate ways to make um, some different things. And so it's mainly our sweet potato maker, but <laughs> it, it it will serve a purpose in other ways. These are things I use daily or almost daily, certainly weekly. Mm-hmm. And, and even then... If there was a place in my cabinets for the air fryer, I would put it down there as well. I just mm-hmm. have a very, very small kitchen. Those of you who have seen my home tour, or actually, if you just saw Les's now, you saw me and Ella and Bex in the kitchen, which is, for some reason, it's the smallest area of our entire house. Yeah, yeah. And that's why this question is so appealing to me, because... Because it's the smallest area in our house, it's almost... We don't live in a tiny house, but we have a tiny kitchen. <laughs> Uh, and, and so like, it feels like we live in a tiny house whenever we, because as soon as I go in the kitchen, Murphy's Law dictates that Bex and Ella follow me into the kitchen and stand wherever I need to be. They just love being around you. Amen. Dude, I'll tell you, my cousin has a tiny house. His kitchen's bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> How great is that? So yeah. uh, I will tell you this. Um, I own quite a few things that are dual purpose tri-purpose, quad-purpose, mm-hmm. quint-purpose. Mm. Correct me on that podcast, Sean. <laughs> uh, Sext-purpose. Not sex-purpose, Sean. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> He's getting out of control over there. <laughs> He's got that look to- in his eyes. My sex toys are in the closet, uh, not in the kitchen. Not in the kitchen, thank God. I do have a bottle of lube in the kitchen, but that's a different story. <laughs> Just imagining what sex toys would double as a kitchen utensil <laughs> and a sex toy. <laughs> yeah, this Hitachi magic wand yeah. is also a uh, potato masher. Um, yeah, just don't eat at Josh's if he cooks <laughs> food for you. <laughs> yeah, don't trust the potatoes at least. Oh, man. Anyway, so I have a lot of things that are multi-purpose, and also I vigorously, rigorously apply the seasonality rule to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. If I have not used something in 90 days, it is, in fact, I just got rid of some. So that that air fryer that we that I mentioned, mm-hmm. it had this like chicken rotisserie thing, mm. which sounds great aspirationally. Yeah. I'm not going to make rotisserie chicken at home. <laughs> and do you know how I know that? Because I've never made rotisserie chicken at home. You I think the, I did once when I was 23. You leave the, that up to the colonel. <laughs> <laughs> No, dude, like how easy is it to get a rotisserie chicken too? Like especially your Air One or Whole Foods. I mean, it's pretty yes, simple to get yeah, one. Yeah, anywhere. If you want a rotisserie chicken, mm-hmm. you, you can get one. And I get, I by the way, I got a rotisserie chicken maker. It was the only thing it did as a wedding gift when I was 22, 23. Oh, wow. And we used it once. And then it sat on a counter for seven years mm. because I had none of these boundaries right. available to me. Yeah. And eventually, I remember looking at Carrie and I was like, Hey, we don't ever use this, do we? She's like, no, but you know, like we might want to use it yeah. someday. I'm like, Cousin John got it for us. We got to yeah. keep it. Yeah. And oh, yeah, we might want to use it. It's back to those narratives we were telling ourselves. It's practically brand new. Well, it's practically brand new because we never freaking use the thing. <laughs> That's the only reason it's practically brand new. Yeah. And so, yes, your kitchen probably is a key place in your home in which you can hide clutter clutter Mm -hmm. well why because there's a lot of drawers a lot of cabinets a lot of extra space even in my little kitchen we have a lot of things in cabinets and drawers now i keep things ordinal and and organized in there but i'm constantly using that seasonality rule yeah by the way if you want the seasonality rule it's in love people use things i'll hold it up if you're watching the video version here or you can download the free version of the 16 Rules for Living with Less. It's called The Minimalist Rulebook, theminimalists.com slash rulebook. There's also an audiobook version of that over there as well. What other things do I do in my kitchen that are interesting that I think are worth mentioning here? So you mentioned the cupboard. You mentioned the fridge. You mentioned the freezer, right? Well, these are all areas that we 
sort of because there's a door, it's a place that we hide our things. Mm. And even though we see it every day, we open the fridge every day or 10 sure. times a day or 40 times a day, however many times we're going over there staring at the fridge, expecting a different result, by the way. <laughs> oh, look, all the same nonsense that's in there. From, <laughs> oh, look, ketchup. Mm. Right. <laughs> we open up the fridge yeah. and yet all of the condiments. And I got to tell you, I know you will resonate with this because you're the sauce king. Yes. And, and, and Bex. They call right? me Captain Sauce. Oh, okay. Well, well <laughs> Bex is your co-captain, apparently. <laughs> because the thing, and the weird thing is, like, we have all these condiments, and they tend to expire. And so I'm the one who's, I'm just constantly every week just looking at expiration dates. Oh, yeah. And as soon as something expires. That's a boundary. It's gone. Yeah. And guess what I'm not doing? I'm not donating. I'm not trying to sell it. <laughs> I know that it has to go. Right. And so creating these boundaries are so important. And when I look around at all of the kitchen utensils, if it's not, if I haven't used it in 90 days, it's gone. If I know I'm not going to use it in the next 90 days, it is gone. Yeah. I mean, any of these boundaries, like my boundaries are, uh, I mean, a lot looser than yours. But, you know, with Mariah and I, we look at the space we have. And how does that space feel? It's like, I don't mind having, you know, my kettle on top of the counter and, I have a, gr a coffee grinder on top of the counter. Um, but there are things that like, I don't want to look at every single day. So yeah. then I put them in the cupboards. Right. And then I just kind of, you know, analyze like, okay, what, uh, what, what is, what is nagging at me? And if nothing's nagging at me, then I don't feel compelled to go into my kitchen and start decluttering. Uh -huh. But obviously this person, this, uh, Katrina, it, it is, it is not, or Katarina, sorry. It's nagging at her. Yeah. So that's where these boundaries have to come into play. Yeah. What's bothering you about your kitchen? Yeah. That's the reason you want to simplify. <laughs> Not because yeah. you don't simply want to tidy up. Mm -hmm. You want to relieve the burden that you're experiencing. And the only way we do that is by letting go. What do you have in your life that you don't want? <laughs> that you wish you didn't have? You can start in your kitchen with that, Katerina. Yeah. Did you enjoy this video? If so, you can listen to full episodes of The Minimalist Private Podcast, available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash The Minimalists today. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement-free.